welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at The Watchman. This is a fabulous hacks integration created by Dummy Lab. Thanks guys. Remember to star them in GitHub for recognition. Have you ever experienced a disruption in your home assistant because certain entities have become permanently unavailable or services have been altered? Well, that's happened to me. I recently moved home and had to totally dismantle my home assistant setup and rebuild it into a new home. I thought this would just be a case of powering down the system, moving it into the new home, deleting devices, renaming others, and fixing automations. Well, I was very wrong, and hence this video. The biggest issue I encountered was that all my automations simply disappeared. Yep, that's over 100 automations that I thought were simply need to delete previous devices, repair and rename devices, and insert new entity names into previous automations. So after some feverish hunting around on the internet, I found that this was probably caused by a rogue entity, now unavailable, causing my home assistant to simply not load any automations. And that is where Watchman came in, riding in to save the day. It identified these rogue entities so that I could delete them from the automation.yaml file and after a quick reboot, all my automations were back. So in today's video, we'll be running through the installation of Watchman, how to run Watchman, running through the report that Watchman generates, what actions you should take based on the report that Watchman generates, and as a bonus, how to display the Watchman report inside of a dashboard to show your missing entities and services. I'll include timestamps in the description so you can jump to the relevant parts of the video that you're interested in. As you might already have Watchman installed and simply want to know what to do with the output or how to display the Watchman output on your dashboard. So let's dive on in. So at the time of recording, I'm running on version 2023.11.0 of Home Assistant Core. To be able to install Watchman, we're going to need hacks. If you don't have hacks installed, then I have a video that will take you through the process in a step-by-step -step guide. Go to the pop-up above or in the description below, and once installed, come back to this video. Now you have hacks installed, let's install the Watchman. Navigate to Hacks, go to Integrations, go to the Explore and Download repositories, search for Watchman, and select. Press the Download button, and confirm with download. Press the back button and you'll see that it has a pending restart. Press the navigate button, check your configuration, make sure the configuration will not prevent Home Assistant from starting. Press the restart, restart Home Assistant and confirm with restart and wait for Home Assistant to come back. Once Home Assistant comes back, let's add the Watchman integration. Navigate to settings, go into integrations, add an integration, Search for and select Watchman. Optionally, you can give this an area. I usually put items that are related to Home Assistant system into a system for area. Press Finish. Select Watchman. Press Configuration. There are several configuration options that you can set within the configuration. And you can view these in the GitHub page. Links in the description below. The only one that I'd actually recommend that you change is if you scroll down the list of the report columns. If you change this to 60, 7, 60, and the reason why we change this will become apparent later on. Scroll down and press submit, and then press finish to finish your installation of the integration. Now let's run the Watchman. Navigate to Developer Tools. Select Services on the top menu. Search for and select Watchman. There are a few additional parameters that you can set but again, the point here is to run the report and action the output. Tweaking these specific needs can come later. Make sure that the file create is selected. You can untick the send notifications. Make sure the parsing configuration is ticked, although this is done by Watchman automatically. So I'm not sure why they left this in place. Check out the documentation and let me know in the comments if you know the reason why this is still here. Chunking size should be ticked and the value set to false. If you have exceptionally long reports and exceed the chunking size, it will create multiple reports, but it will still run and complete. Now press Core Service. The report is generated really quickly on my HP server and literally takes one to two seconds. And we're done. 
Only kidding. This is not the silver bullet that you all might have hoped it is. Now we need to go and review the report and action the output. So the watchman underscore report dot text file that was created will be located in the slash config directory. So we'll need a file editor to view this from within Home Assistant. I recommend using Studio Code Server as my go-to file editor. If you don't have a file editor and want to install Studio Code Server, then go to the link in the pop-up above or in the description below and come back to this video. Navigate to Studio Code Server in the left-hand menu. You will notice the watchman underscore report dot txt file has appeared. Select this. Now you can see why we adjusted the column width. Entity names can be long, and to save having word wrap on the entity names, they now appear on a single line. So let's go through the report. The report is split into two sections. The first is for missing services, and the second section is for missing entities. The principle for fixing these is the same. In this example, you will see that the lights.study underscore lights is missing. If you scroll to the right of this, You'll see the location of the missing entity is in my automation.yaml at lines 47, 53, and 59. If we now move across into our automations.yaml file and we go to the corresponding line, we will see the entity ID that is missing. If you scroll up from that point, you'll see an alias. You'll see that this is in relation to a lounge cube. This is the automation that we need to look for inside of our automations. Navigate down into settings, across into automations, search for and select the lounge cube. Select your automation, scroll to the relevant section, expand it out and remove the offending entity. In this case, I'll be deleting the whole of this section and replacing it later on. Press save and we're done in relation to line 47. If you go back into Studio Code Server, Look for your watchman report. 57 was our next one. An important point to make here is that we've gone across and edited the automation associated with line 47 that has dynamically updated the automation.yaml file. Hence, the later lines that we have picked up inside of our watchman report are now no longer relevant because the automation.yaml file has been changed. If you're going to make any modifications to the UI, that you process these missing entities in reverse order. So therefore, the ones that are at the higher levels will not have changed at this point in time. To demonstrate this, let's go and rerun our Watchman report. Go back into Developer Tools. We can leave all of the defaults alone again because they won't have changed from last time. Press Call Service. Go back into Studio Code Server. You'll now see that our numbers have changed. We no longer have three lines associated with the missing entity. We only have two. Previously, this one was at line 53. It's now changed to line 49. We can move across into our automation.yaml file, go down to our 49, and we'll find the missing entity again. This missing entity is again inside of our automation for our lounge cube. And we can similarly go back into our automations and remove it. You now should repeat this task associated with all entities that are either missing or unavailable inside of your report. You will have noticed that the states of these can be either unavailable or missing. Unavailable might be because there is an entity that is fully legitimate and is working as intended. You might have turned off that device, but the device turned on, the entity will become available again. As such, these should not be deleted. Missing, on the other hand, means there is no reference to the entity for a device, and it has probably been deleted. So be careful in your actions that you take and understand what you're looking at before making changes. Another point to make is that if you are comfortable editing the automation.yaml file, you can do that directly within Studio Code Server. However, if you're like the vast majority of us, that when you've created your automations, you have done them through the UI, I would highly recommend that you remain in the UI and do not make any direct updates to your automation.yaml file. If you make edits to your automation.yaml file and Home Assistant can't parse it, it will come back and will not be able to display it inside of the UI. As a bonus, let's add the output of the watchman to a dashboard, which is really easy. I've created a new dashboard for the demonstration purposes. We'll be using some predefined code from the GitHub 
for Watchmen. Navigate to this page, link in the description below. Scroll down to the title of Markdown Card Example. Now, copy the code under the content and before the card mod. Navigate to your dashboard. Edit your dashboard. Press Add Card. We want to search for and select the Markdown card. Delete the contents and paste in the new code. As you'll see in the preview, we now have all 27 missing entries that are described inside of the Watchman report. Press Save. We can now do likewise in relation to the missing services. Navigate to the page, scroll down a little bit further, copy the content underneath the content label and copy. Move back to your dashboard, add a card, search for and select Markdown card. Delete the content, paste in your code. As you see from the example, there's no preview available for this. And I believe that there was an error in relation to the code. Scroll across where it says services, we're going to replace this with entities. Once you've replaced it, you'll see that the preview has now become available. Press save. And we now have our Watchman report. To update the report, we simply need to refresh the page. As I said before, this is really quick on my HP server. It might vary on your machine based on the power of the machine itself. So there you have it, a super useful integration that will keep your home assistant working smoothly and hopefully avoid the issue that I had where all my automations disappeared. It also has the added advantage that the less time Home Assistant has to check for missing and unavailable entities, the quicker it will start. If you found this video useful, then please let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. Hopefully, you will not have to spend too much time cleaning missing entities. Mine was running at 400 plus, and I created this video at the tail end of my cleaning to help you guys out. Watch out for further videos to help you out with Home Assistant rebuilds and how to keep your system running smoothly and quickly. Until the next one.